Coming in outside the box reviews, Predator Week continues, and today we're taking a look at the NECA Predator, Wave 17, Serpent Hunter Predator. So this is a figure based on the game, at least I had it on PS3, I think it was on whatever the Xbox console was at the time too. And if I remember right, this was like an alternate mask or alternate costume you could get for the main character because... I believe the main character was a pretty generic looking predator and then they gave you this option. It's been a long time since I've played that game, but really what it means is we get a very unique looking predator from NECA. This figure is based on the AVP body, but it has been given some tweaks. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. For accessories, we get a standard shuriken, nice silver blades here with some red detailing in the middle. This kind of red coloration we'll see throughout the predator, kind of making it look a little more unique than its AVP brethren but very standard piece we've gotten a bunch before we do get a alternate left hand that seems like it's meant to hold this then we get the ceremonial dagger same sculpt we've gotten before as well with the split silver blade here but once again we get that red detailing in these little gems and the wrap here at the base making it look more in line with the rest of this predator and as always we could just put it right in the sheath there on his leg for easy storage and now he's ready to go so the bio mask on this predator i think is the big draw for it it's quite obviously a xenomorph inspired sculpt I think it is a little awkward because it seems to sit really far forward on his head. So this jaw is kind of protruding out here. But overall, I think it looks pretty cool. It also comes in a little narrow here at the sides. Maybe look, it's kind of sucked in cheeks. But he has a very smooth dome to match the Xenomorph. The teeth are nicely sculpted in there. He has this kind of cool looking curved section here where the wires from his biomass come out that just looks really neat. He has a similar piece here on the other side for the targeting system, which is one of the few bits of color on this mask, a bright red there. Everything else, including his dreadlocks, is very, very dark black with kind of some silver accents to it. You can, however, see a little bit of his head coming out from underneath the bio mask, which does have the normal predator flesh tone, which is nice. The dreads, once again, very standard. We have the silver jewels throughout them, matching the way the bio mask looks. Overall, cool looking. On the neck here, we have the standard rings going around it we see on a lot of predators. Here in the back, we do have his plasma caster and pack. The basic AVP sculpt here, though I think this is a little more old school looking of a plasma caster. But mine is incredibly floppy here in the middle. This, of course, can extend out, and then you can hinge here at the base, then hinge in the middle. You can also swivel here at the base. And then you have a ball joint here at the top where you can move the cannon around and get a really good range of motion. I, however, don't particularly like having it on this figure because it's a very bulky biomass to begin with and just feels like you're adding a lot more bulk by having that huge backpack on him. The armor here is very unique looking. We kind of have these weird panels going across his left shoulder and a little spine on a piece of leather as well, which is very unique. Here on the right, we don't have any shoulder armor. We have a little necklace going across here with some little animal skulls on it. The chest armor is just on his left side and it looks like it has some clamps going on in the front. We also get some of that red accent that we talked about earlier. And actually kind of has this centerpiece as well coming off the neck down the center of the chest. So there's some cool new detail here that I actually hadn't even realized was on here. Both arms kind of have these armbands with a little skull up there and it looks like almost teeth going around on the leather strap. An interesting touch. The flesh tone on this predator is very similar yellow to the AVP predators, but the brown is a much lighter tone than we usually get with them. So it gives it a little different look. The wrist gauntlets are more similar to the original Jungle Hunter in design, but I think they're a little AVP'd up, but they look very, very nice. And then both have these very large claws that slide in and out just like the first two movie style Predators. I love how gigantic these blades are. They're very fitting for a Xenomorph inspired Predator. Get the exact same thing here on his other side, but we do get a wrist computer on top of that gauntlet, and it does actually have some Predator numbers going on, which is really cool. But this gauntlet basically functions exactly the same as the other. Both hands originally come with fists on them, but you can replace both of them. Pop out. And then we can pop in our alternate hands, which are both gripping hands, kind of a wider grip here on his right, and a tighter kind of angled grip here on his left. I think this would look good holding the shuriken like he was about to fling it, and this one you could probably give him a spare combi spear or something like that, and you could probably hold the shuriken as well. My one gripe is the fingernails here on my alternate left hand are not painted at all. They are just that yellow with the rest of his flesh, and even his right hand here got paint on all the nails, so kind of a glaring omission on this hand. The rest of the back is pretty standard. We have that same half armor we've seen in a lot of other AVP predators. The belt isn't too unique, but it does have some extra stuff going on. We kind of have this like tattered 
rag section coming down the bottom. We have some teeth kind of stitched into it, but the belt up here at the top is very similar to other AVP belts we've seen with all the pouches and shurikens. Then we get similar armor here on this upper right leg, which is connected to the belt. But these extra bits hanging a little further down, we get some skulls here, we get a little different section here in the back. These are all unique and give the Predator a little more character. And then on both legs, we get this kind of band going around them. There's a little loop where all the leather straps tuck in. Mine's a little loose here on the right. It's kind of sliding down, but you can just slide them up and they'll tighten up as they get moved. I already mentioned the sheath here on the side, but you can see that it does carry on that red detailing. We have these very interestingly designed boots. They don't come up to the knee like a lot of the other AVP style boots. And we do have these kind of straps here on the inside as opposed to just continuing this V shape that the rest of the boot has. Then we have the very standard AVP clawed sandals down there at the bottom and peg holes at the bottom of the feet. For articulation, this predator is very standard, but my example is incredibly stiff. We get a ball joint here at the neck, can't look very far up just based on how bulky the head is. Can't really look too much further down than it wants to naturally. It's kind of just limited to a very, very small range of movement without pushing it. You can go left and right as well as pivot just a little bit. The arms are pinned socket joints, so they'll go forward back as well as out to the side. Or a bicep rotation, double jointed elbows, a rotation at the bottom of each gauntlet, and a ball joint at the wrist. Get a mid torso ball joint so you can go back, forward, and rotate side to side and pivot. Same kind of idea going on as waist. You can go side to side, forward and back, and pivot. Once again, mine being super tight. The legs will go forward, back, as well as out to the side. Mine feel really hindered. I think it's because he has all this stuff going on on his waist. It's putting a lot of extra pressure on the legs and keeping them from wanting to move very freely. He also should have an upper leg rotation, but both of my joints are pretty much stuck. I'm going to have to put some serious heat on on this to get it to loosen up. He has double joints here at the knees. You can also rotate at the knee. And then we have a ball joint at the foot. So in all reality, despite some other releases, this is really the second Predator NECA's ever put out based specifically on a video game. I'm not counting those 8-bit, 16-bit renditions of Predators that already existed. I'm talking about figures made off a of video game character that require a lot of new sculpting. But where the Concrete Jungle Predator was just freaking awesome and made an impression both in the game and as a figure, this just kind of could be any random concept. Which is weird because I had more fun playing Aliens vs. Predator than I ever did playing Concrete Jungle. But beyond the cool factor of this looking like a Xenomorph but being a Predator, the design never really stuck with me. So I'm looking at it now and thinking, Man, this is cool. It's got a lot of new sculpted bits that I hadn't even realized were there until I took a really critical look at it. The dual blades are neat. The biomask is definitely cool. But it's one of those weird pieces where I feel like it's very easily forgettable, despite having cool features to it. I'm going to still give it a solid recommend. It's just not hitting that perfect spot of super coolness to me. And I can't even really explain why. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, username Outside the Box Reviews. Also check me out on Facebook, link below. Please like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this has been our Outside the Box Reviews. Predator Week continues next.